give me one second. It's being a little slow today. That kind of day. I had the weird drive to city for work day for the first time in 14 months. It was <laughs> the strangest thing to get in a car and go downtown and be with human beings. And I have to do it again for two more days and I may well come out of this a normal human being again. <laughs> oh, let's not set such a high bar. We are so now when, streaming <laughs> live. Thank you. <laughs> hey, the golf committee met in person yesterday. So we, we achieved a milestone. Excellent. Congratulations. That's awesome. That was fun. All right. All right. Uh, pursuant to recently adopted amendments to the Illinois Open Meetings Act included in Public Act 101-0640, public bodies may, in certain circumstances, hold entirely virtual public meetings without a quorum physically present in any one location. On March 17, 2020, President Levin issued a declaration of emergency to address the health threat posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. On June 15, 2020, President Levin executed a written determination that, given the ongoing emergency associated with the COVID-19 pandemic, in-person meetings of the Board of Trustees are not practical or prudent. On April 30, 2021, Governor Pritzker issued his most recent disaster proclamation in Executive Order 202109 that declared in-person attendance at public meetings of more than 10 people at the regular public meeting location to be infeasible. In accordance with the above actions, in-person meetings of the Finance Committee are not practical or prudent at this time and until further notice. This meeting is being conducted virtually with members participating through the Zoom webinar platform. Village, Corrali is, Village Manager Corrali is present in the Village Hall as required by the Open Meetings Act. Chairman Cor or, uh, Village Manager Corrali, can you give us a roll call? Certainly. Trustee Vree. Here. Trustee Miller. Trustee Rubin. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, in accordance with the supplemental rule, the board, the board approved on April 16th, 2020, here's how public comment will be taken at this meeting. The email address and telephone number designated for the public comment for this meeting were published with the meeting agenda. In a moment, I will ask Assistant to the Village Manager, Jordan Lester, to read the public comments that were submitted prior to the meeting. If anyone would like to submit a public comment during the meeting, please email your comment to Glencoe Meeting at villageofglencoe.org. Comments submitted during the meeting may be read at the end of the meeting. Written comments should be limited to 400 words. Assistant to the Village Manager Lester, can you please read any public comments if there are any? Trustee Avery, we did not receive any public comment tonight. Okay, thank you. Um, I need a motion. Well, I need a motion to approve the minutes unless there are any amendments that need to be made. So moved. Second. <laughs> I think we're in favor. <laughs> Trustee Green. Yes. Favor. Trustee Rubin. Yes. Okay. Um, and now for review of the financial reports, Nikki. Here. Okay. Can everyone see okay? Yes. All right. I'm going to go over tonight's agenda. So we'll start off with the treasurer's report and go through some of the fund highlights um, and then go into the community investment program updates. We'll have a brief financial policy review and then finish out the evening with a budget calendar review. So kicking right into the financial reports um, for the month of April, um, just a few highlights in the general fund. Our property taxes are still lower than the prior year. Um, they're actually uh, slightly higher than what we had expected um, due to the county delaying the first installment due, da due date um, or penalty date. We were anticipating approximately 20% of Glencoe residents taking advantage of the due date. Um, we're running about 14%. Um, in the month of May, I can tell you anecdotally, we are seeing um, a continued influx of property tax receipts. Um, so that it does appear mm -hmm. that we are going to receive everything that we expected um, on the timing that we, um, that we had predicted. This is a good news month for the general fund. Um, income tax continues to be higher than last year. We're at 43% of budget and our sales taxes um, continue to perform well. And we'll talk a little bit more about the month to month income um, in just a moment. 
our permit revenue is also higher than last year and our utility taxes have rebounded um, at 45% of budget. And the good news with our places for eating tax, if you've been around downtown, you've seen that our restaurants are performing very well. Um, our places for eating tax is at 55% of budget um, of what we were anticipating for the year. On the water fund end, there is a delay in reporting these revenues since we bill for prior usage, um, but volumetric and fixed charge revenues continue to be higher than budget. Um, the drier than usual May is certainly helping those figures, so we do expect to see that volumetric revenue um, kick up in the coming months when we start to bill for summer usage. A few notes on the cash flow projections. This shows, this chart shows the sales taxes. Um, really when we started to talk about the COVID numbers um, through all the way through what we are starting to see in May. Um, our sales tax, as I mentioned earlier, is doing very well. We have received the May distribution number already and it's um, higher than last year as well. Um, so it continues to perform strong, which is great news both for us and for our local businesses. On the building permit revenue front, um, this month was a very strong month for building permits. We processed two new single family home um, construction permits and then seven single family additions or accessory permits. Um, so this month alone, we received about $133,000 in building permit revenue. So that's a, a good story as well. Um, overall, when we're looking at the projection for the year, projected revenue versus what we're seeing um, with actual receipts and what we're projecting for the rest of the year, we are projecting that revenue will come in about $300,000 over budget, um, which is a good news story. Um, now, that will be offset by expenditures. Um, and as the committee may remember from last year's budget process, we were planning on digging into reserves this year for a few capital expenditures um, that were deferred from last year's budget. Um, so overall, uh, it's been a strong performance for the general fund, for the water fund um, operating in general. Um, we're really starting to see these numbers rebound and kind of sustain those higher levels. Um, included in your memo, our two mid-year updates. This is new this month. Um, and just a couple things as we're talking about last year's budget process. You might remember that we made a, a few significant changes to the budget, just not being able to anticipate what was going to happen with the financial and economic impacts of COVID. So in addition to cutting quite a bit out of our operating uh, budgets, we did budget a delayed cost of living increase for non-union employees. That was set at a 2% cost of living adjustment. So that would be any employee that is not under um, a collective bargaining unit agreement. Um, and then there were also two vacancies that we have that were delayed until July 1st. Um, and we had kind of agreed with the board at the finance committee meetings that we would revisit this as of July 1 to see if we would continue with these or not. Um, and at this point, given how well the village is performing financially, staff is recommending that we do go forward with that. Um, now, just to kind of give you an idea, um, these items were included in the budget. So from a numeric standpoint, the 2% cost of living raise um, was about $60,000, and that's for an effective date of July 1. And the fulfillment of public safety officer was just shy of that at 58,000, and the maintenance equipment operator was um, less than that at 45,000. Are there any questions on the recommendation to move forward with that? Okay, seeing none. Um, the other mid-year update that I'd like to include, or that is included in your memo, um, is the American Recovery Act update. Um, we've heard a lot about this in the news. The, the Treasury is getting ready to release these funds um, to the states and also large metropolitan cities. 
um, as what as Glencoe, we are not considered a large metropolitan city. Uh, so we will be receiving this funding directly from the state of Illinois. So we'll be a subrecipient. Um, we are expecting the first installment to come mid to late July. Uh, the state has about 60 days to transmit those funds to us from the point in time that they receive that. So those funds will flow through the comptroller's office to the village of Glencoe. Um, as you'll remember from last month's finance committee, this can be used for a myriad of things uh, to help municipalities with um, the impacts of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, but primarily where we were focusing on uh, more sewer and water infrastructure projects um, and the potential for us to either maintain um, the village's water rate or decrease future increases that would have otherwise happened. Um, and that would really be a way for the entire community to benefit from this funding. Um, we are required to obligate these funds by December 31st, 2024. Um, we have a little bit of leeway in timing in terms of when they're expended. Um, and as of right now, we're still expecting about 545,000 for the first installment. Um, but we won't know that exact number, obviously, until we get the distribution. Can I ask a question about that? Sure. Um, so the use of the funds, um, just so we have, an, we have more freedom to issue debt relative to water for revenue-based bonds. Um, do we want to use this on an area where we have less ability to raise debt if necessary? Um, rather than water. Uh, Nikki, I can jump in for sure. a second. I think, uh, Trustee Vree, I think the answer to that is is yes, as it relates to the sewer fund, as the sewer, um, not the sewer fund, sewer projects, as those are generally funded out of the general fund um, on an annual, bi annual basis. What we had talked about last month and what staff is still recommending is that however we end up doing it, whether it's the, you know, the ability to offset um, and utilize bond resources for something else, or as Nikki had mentioned relative to the water rate, um, being able to reduce future increases on that, that, there may be a similar opportunity with the sewer rate. Um, and I think, however, we look at this, I think that's a good point. Your, your comment relative to being able to preserve debt, um, resources for other purposes that, that would fall under the referendum approved bonds that, uh, you'll be looking at next month. So we certainly can look at that from the sewer, um, projects standpoint. And, um, you know, these, these funds were, unexpected. They are welcomed. We need them, certainly. Um, we have no dearth of, of need for this type of investment. So I think um, whether we look at sewer, we look at water, we look at both, um, there's, there's definitely some opportunity there. Okay. I just, because again, we've got significant capital needs on all fronts. So with more flexibility in water, maybe use it on all, somewhere else. Sewer being one, it's just water's listed for both. Yeah, it's it's it can only be really utilized for utility purposes. So, for in our case, that's that's water and sewer. Okay. So um, we'd look at, at both, but definitely sewer from the standpoint of offset of general fund. Okay. Good question. Thank you. Any other questions on the financial report? Okay, seeing none, I'm going to move on and hand it over to Stella for the Golf Club financial update. Thank you, Nikki. Well, compared to last year, we did very well because we were closed the entire month of April last year. Um, rounds were significant in April. We had 1,800 rounds over budget. As you know, it was very dry, which is great for golf. Uh, we also had a thousand rounds over our previous record from 2010. So it was high temperatures and low precipitation, which is great for golf. Significant revenue sources were our power carts, which were three times over our budget. Usually April, they don't go out much because of uh, the wet conditions. And also the cart path work that we have in place that we did last year um, would have offset any of those really, you know, saturated turf days that didn't happen this year. 
Uh, expenses are a little bit below budget, just the delays and some capital spending. Uh, we weren't able to do as much capital work because we were operational. So the majority of the staff was, was working on upkeep of uh, the grounds. Uh, Friends of the Glencoe Golf Club, we had a board meeting yesterday. Things are going along very well. Uh, everyone is enthusiastic about pushing forward and doing it very quickly. Uh, we have formed a civic committee that is not part of the Friends Board. They will not be asking people for money per se, but they will be supporting the project behind the scenes with their connections. Uh, we have some very interesting people that are interested in joining the, the civic committee, um, potential high donors um, will be participating in that other committee. So uh, very excited to have people on board all the way around. Um, we did decide that we are going to have uh, a centennial outing this year. We were kind of waiting to see what was going on with all the guidelines and Everything is in our favor. So save the date for August 13th. It's Friday the 13th in August. We're going to have our centennial celebration outing. Uh, we will have a dinner portion of that for not golfers. A portion of that will be going to Friends of the Glencoe Golf Club, portion of the entry fee, as well as whole sponsorships will be sold for $250 with 100% of that going towards Friends. So we're, we're moving quite quickly in that direction to start making the, the big asks of people. And we hope to have in play by the centennial outing, a significant number uh, that we can reveal to really kickstart the entire campaign and, and bring it more into the public eye. And that's my report. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank Stella. You. You're welcome. Okay, Assistant Finance Director Joseph, would you like to give the CIP update? Yes, thank you, Nikki, and good evening. Presented on this slide is the May update to our CIP schedule. I uh, just want to mention that on Thursday evening's agenda for your consideration is an agreement with Baxter and Woodman for engineering services that are related to the Dell Place Longwood Avenue sanitary sewer analysis for a total cost of 61180 um, just want to mention that the engineering review and analysis work should be completed with a final report submitted to staff by the end of November. And then moving to the CIP quarterly report, um, we do have a couple of projects that we had initially indicated would be on the May Village Board agenda for your consideration. However, we've had to adjust those timeframes slightly. So included um, in the blue highlighted are those projects that have kind of shifted a little bit in terms of their schedule. Um, I do wanna mention that next month's village board agenda for your consideration will include a contract for phase two of the downtown gateway and find, uh, wayfinding signage. So at this time, happy to answer any questions you have on the CIP. So Denise, this is your last one, isn't it? This is my last one. Just saying congratulations and thank you. Thank yeah. you. <clears throat> yes, congratulations. Thank you very Appreciate much. Appreciate everything you've done for us. It's been an honor and pleasure to be part of the Glencoe community. I really value all the opportunities that have been afforded to me during my 10 years of serving with the village. We appreciate yeah. it too, so thank you very much. Thank you. She said before the meeting started that she was more than happy to come back on Tuesdays to do these reports. Oh, so. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <in> these meetings. <laughs> uh, all good. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much, Denise. Okay, moving on to our next agenda item. Um, included in the finance committee packet um, are both red line and clean line versions of the most up-to-date village financial policies. Um, as the committee probably remembers this time last year, um, this is really the hallmark um, of when we start kicking off the budget process. Uh, if you can believe it, we're there already with the calendar year. Um, so what we have done is kind of gone through at a staff level and identified areas of the financial policies that 
um, may need to be updated based off of feedback that we've received from the committee um, or new regulatory changes um, that we've identified. Uh, the first of the policy changes that we're recommending um, is to consider a fund balance target that might be slightly higher than what we have today. Um, the suggestion that we had included in the memo was a 25% fund balance target and kind of maintaining that minimum fund balance of two and a half million so we don't dip below that. Um, and please stop me if you have any questions, but I'll, I'll go through all of these and also give you an opportunity for questions at the end. Um, the next policy uh, that I wanted to highlight is also the property tax abatement. This kind of alludes to what Chair Vree was speaking about earlier uh, with the water alternate revenue bonds. Um, we are recommending again that the 2020 water alternate revenue bonds be abated, um, essentially meaning that the debt service on those would be paid directly from water revenue. Um, management fees and limited tax debt are the next two policies. Um, both of these might require pending further analysis. Um, we need more information on the two of these. We've talked at great length um, during the discussion about forgiving the Glencoe Golf Club loan um, and adopting that forgiveness policy that we would need to also reevaluate any management fee structure. Um, right now, the village charges a management fee for the water fund and the golf club fund. So what we would like to do is bring back an analysis as part of the um, fee and fine discussion as part of the budget process um, and present something for the committee to approve on, an, on a go forward basis. Um, and then incorporate those into budget discussions. On the limited tax debt, um, we are just starting to look at updating the 10 year CIP. Um, and along with that would be an update of the associated financing plan and the recommendation that we would make to the committee. Uh, limited tax debt is always an option for the committee and the board to consider. Um, so that it would be something that would be incorporated into that analysis as well. Um, and then last on this slide would be fees and charges for service. Our plan is to move forward with our annual fee survey as we do every year, um, just to verify that our fees and charges are in line with our surrounding communities, um, that nothing is kind of out of whack there. And then also um, taking another look at the water rate analysis. Um, we have been religiously following the water rate study that was done several years back um, and have been making water rate increases in accordance with that. Um, now that I would say almost all um, of the meter technology has been replaced, we have a very small percentage remaining. Um, we have a better idea of um, what's actually flowing through our meters. And we can, this is a good opportunity for us to take a pause and take a look at the rate increases that are scheduled going forward, compare those to what we're planning to spend in capital improvements and make sure that we're still on track. Um, and also incorporating the American recovery bonds, um, that funding, not bonds, but the American recovery grant funding um, and determining if that can help lower those um, rate increases overall in the long run. So a lot of moving, a lot of moving pieces there, but proposing to an analyze all of them together. Um, and I will spare you a large discussion on pension funding. Uh, we have absolutely discussed this to, to death, but um, we are obviously recommending to go forward with what the committee directed us to do um, in the first quarter of this year. Um, at the June Finance Committee, you can look forward to our actuaries coming back. Um, they are presenting our um, end of year results, which, you know, spoiler alert, I'm sure you already know this. Um, we did end the year quite strong. So it is a positive result for us um, from an investment return standpoint. So they will give you the full details of that um, along with the recommended contributions. And then obviously on the fire pension side, we're just recommending that we continue that pay as you go policy. Um, and then lastly, of the policies that I wanted to highlight, um, we have surplus and reserves 
at both of our insurance pools. Um, Irma, as we've talked about at length, is the insurance pool that covers the village's property, casualty, um, workers' comp insurance. And we do have a significant reserve um, on hand with them. And then IPBC is where we purchase our health, dental, um, let me see, and life insurance from them. We also have a reserve um, on hand with IPBC. It's in excess of $200,000. Those are funds that we could draw upon at any point in time. Um, we can use those for insurance related um, expenditures or in Irma's case, we can also use those for safety related programs um, or mitigation efforts if there are um, unsafe or hazardous conditions that we want to rectify. So those are um, surplus and reserves that we do want to incorporate with the budget discussion this year as we start looking at expenditures that the departments will be proposing later this summer. Um, these might be some of the funding sources that we recommend um, moving forward. And at this point, I'm happy to answer any questions on any of the policy recommendations. Okay. I guess I have just one comment. So regarding the fund balance, um, adjusting the target, but not the minimum, does that do much? Um, I mean, that's, that's, it certainly does something, but I, I mean, do we want to bump up, if we think we need three months worth of expenses in, in the balance, does that mean we're not being careful because we allow ourselves to go even lower with the minimum or should we move that as well? It would certainly make sense to bump the, the minimum as well. I think um, it, where we were trying to go is to give a little bit of flexibility in case something happened um, to allow the village to still maintain compliance with that policy. Um, but that's a good point in terms of raising the minimum. If we're if we're saying we need three months, then right, that's what it should be. Uh, uh, yeah, I concur. Good point. Okay. And I, I don't know if you know offhand, but how often have we dipped below? even the three month balance, even though our target has been below that for the past few years. Um, how often do we get below that, do you know? We haven't since I've been here. Um, my understanding, and I can kind of call on manager Corrali here for his assistance um, in terms of historical knowledge. I know that that dollar amount much used to be much lower um, in terms of reserves that we had on hand, uh, much less than 2 million, um, I think, Phil, when you yeah, started, no, maybe we had about a million. It was ten percent, I think. Mm -hmm. It was ten percent. Um, it was it was very low. Um, that that was the policy about around the time I started as village manager, almost eight years ago. Um, so we have certainly built that up, um, and I can't recall a time where we've ever fallen below the target um, uh, in in my time here. But certainly, we have worked as a group to uh, build up those reserves. Thankfully, you know, we were, we were questioning about you know, a year ago whether we were gonna need to use them. Um, and thankfully we did not, but uh, that was the kind of rainy day that we were worried about. So um, I think we've been prudent to be conscious of keeping that dollar figure where the board has set policy. And I, I would be in favor of, of Trustee Vries' recommendation on, on moving up that minimum dollar figure as well. It's a, it only makes sense. That's easy, we can do that. The only, the only you know, hesitation would be if we, over the last few years have gotten below the 25%, not the, not the current policy, but if we've, if we've, if it starts to get expensive just to maintain this, um, we're doing something wrong, but, but um, I think we just want to be cognizant of, of if that's happened and how often and, um, but otherwise I, I think it makes, I, I think it certainly makes sense to have three months worth of reserves. We can look at that trustee Vri, and certainly if there are, you know, that, that's information we can share with you next month. Okay. That if there have been instances where that's taken place, what were the circumstances that, that related to those incidences? But again, I, I, there are very few of them, if there are any. Okay, thanks. Thanks. 
I think this you. is I think this is going to be coming up when you look with you know, because even even the lower numbers started to be a factor when you looked at the five year projections, depending upon what happened with the pension funds. Now we're putting ourselves on a little different path, a little more sustainable path, hopefully. So I think we have to. Uh oh. Trustee Rubin, I think we've lost you. I think you froze. Sorry, can you hear You're me back. now? Yes, You're we back. can. Yep. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that. Anyway, I'm just saying I'm in favor. I think the, the, the issue that we're going to find is not so much historically lately, but rather um, going forward and looking at projections when we're dealing, especially with the pensions, we just need to be careful about it. Okay. And we certainly, that is a good point. Um, we will be looking at this in tandem with the financial forecast. And we certainly do not need to finalize this tonight. We have time, um, a lot of time before the, the final budget will be approved. Um, so as we get closer and we start looking at updated expenditure requests and what we're recommending in terms of a draft budget, we can look at these at the same time. Just make sure that that's still sustainable. Do those Recovery Act bonds are we using, does that go through budget or is that something we're dealing with separately? These were unbudgeted, so it, it was a, a it. nice surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just, Bonus money. What, yeah, when we get them, they will certainly be integrated into budget planning and, and expenditure planning. Mm -hmm. How long do we have to spend it? Is it the 2024 that we, we have to decide how it's spent or that it has to be spent? Right. You have to decide by 2024, as long as you are obligated in a contract to spend them, spend the funds in some way, you actually have until 26 to complete it. So if you were doing a large multi-year project, you've got a little bit of leeway, but we have to decide by 24. Pretty sure most governments can. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not worried about that. I don't think there's going to be too many thinking, oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. With our CIP, that's not going to be a problem. No. <laughs> any, any government. Okay. All right. Any other questions on policy? Okay. All right. So thank you for the feedback. We will make note of those and we'll get you some more information next month. Um, okay. So the last item on the agenda. Um, oh, I think I might have gone out of, out of order here. I'm sorry. Uh, but is the budget schedule. Um, the full budget schedule is included in your packet. I will not read this to you, um, but just kind of hitting some of the highlights. Um, obviously, we're starting off this month with the discussions on the policies and the guidelines that will go out to departments. We are planning on making budget entry available for all of the departments, so they'll start to be working on their requests for next year, and they'll largely have the summer to do that. Um, which will, is good, we'll start to see how the economy will continue to evolve as restrictions related to COVID are lifted. We'll have a better idea of where our, our finances are um, on a go forward basis and hopefully they're continuing the way that they are today. Um, for the board, um, for the important part of the finance committee, we would still be expecting discussions to really kick up later this fall um, in October, I think we're going to start with um, the financial forecast, reviewing the draft tax levy. Um, we should have a better idea of figures by then and then plan for the budget presentation in November and hopefully the final adoption in December, uh, which would include the tax levy ordinance, the budget fee resolution, and then any budget amendments that would be required at that point. Um, Nikki, if I could just oh. mention one thing, you could stay on that that slide, yeah. Sure. Um, this may feel a little more constrained than normal. Um, we've we've talked a little bit internally um, that I think trying to pull the budget presentation over a three month window uh, leading up to the December approval um, lines up real nicely with with how we wanted to be able to utilize a calendar year fiscal year. Um, and so uh, we are adjusting the schedule only slightly. Um, 
components of the budget process will still be presented to you in June and July, and we'll be um, highlighting in August and September uh, just some of the, the components of that process as we go through it. Um, but just, just wanted to make mention of that, that really now as we transition to a calendar year planning process, that it, it did shift the, um, the calendar just slightly. But uh, we still think there's more than adequate time for public discussion and dialogue with the full board and the, in the finance committee structure. Thank you, Manager Crowley. Okay. And then also included um, in the memo with the budget schedule um, was just a, a brief overview on what staff is recommending in terms of the referendum bond project schedule. This kind of goes hand in hand um, with the budget schedule because we will be discussing this as part of the CIP. Um, but we wanted to have the discussion with the finance committee in advance, understanding that we will be presenting a bond issue for you um, for your consideration next month. Um, as you recall, um, in April, we had a successful bond referendum um, that was very well supported by the community to issue $10 million in general obligation bonds. Um, so the finance department's been working with the public works department to determine the most feasible way of utilizing these funds um, and providing the greatest benefit. So thank you to Director Mao um, and your engineering team uh, for putting the schedule together. What we are proposing would be a $7 million bond issue uh, that will go to market next month in June. Uh, via competitive bond sale, and then splitting that up into a second issue with the remaining um, 10 million less the seven would be $3 million. Um, and that would fund essentially the second tranche of projects. Um, this is a little tricky. We are structuring it around funding that we are receiving in terms of grant funding. Um, the issuance, the timing of the issuance of the bonds, and also just the feasibility of completing so many projects at once. Um, we, from the time of receipt of bond proceeds, we have about three years to spend them. Um, so we do have to kind of carefully think out what we can get done and when and how we can ladder um, the financing to make sure that we're in line with all of the requirements of the bond. Um, this is fairly close to what was presented um, when we were advertising the referendum. So you can see the various categories of improvements starting from top to bottom, just under $5 million in storm sewer improvements, 1.2 in sanitary sewer, 800,000 in sidewalks. And then the street program is split between there is a bond financing component to this. And then there's also additional street funding. So as you will probably remember, the village has been receiving installments of Rebuild Illinois funding. Um, that was going to happen over three years um, with two installments each year. So we started receiving those funds last year. They have been deposited into our motor fuel tax fund and we're allowing those funds to aggregate uh, to supplement the referendum bond funding so that we can do a larger road program. And I'm happy to turn it over to Dave Mao if you have anything to add, um, if you think I've missed anything here. No, I think you covered it well. Are there Good any question. questions? Quick question. Um, you have three years once you receive proceeds to spend them. How long do you have, how, how long uh, is the authorization that we just got from our residents good for in terms of issuing the second set of bonds? That's a good question. Um, I believe, I have to double check that. Okay. I don't wanna say, I we're in line with it here. I want to say it's 10 years, but I 
Oh, really? I don't okay, want to speak long? out okay. of I don't want to speak out of turn. <laughs> I think I think Nikki's right. It's it is a long window, but we'll confirm that with okay. you, Trustee Ruben. My only question would be if I mean we're not not getting out of hand yet, but there are signs that inflation is picking up, and um, it, it, you know input costs and, and materials costs are certainly going up. So. How aggressive are we in terms of these budget, or these numbers for each project and how much sort of inflation have we baked in? How much, you know, I guess just the question on inflation and how accurate do we think this is if we start to see three, three percent inflation instead of the two we've seen in the past or even four percent? I could start that uh, response. We, you know, all we always include a a contingency that kind of kind of uses a three percent factor per year in these numbers, and and these are these are some of these estimates are are conceptual, ready to go to final design, and so the the, the numbers get sharper when we get into design, and then then obviously we want to get out to the bid market, but. By, by front loading, I mean, there's, there's a lot of heavy lifting in this first issuance. And so we're, we're confident that we're gonna, I, I'm confident in Director Larson's ability to, to recoup us a nice uh, low interest rate for this first issuance. Beyond that bond issue number two, you know, that's a, bit, a little bit more of a crystal ball. So those Recovery Act bonds, um... You know, we just talked about the timing of them and having three years. Can we not, can we hold it for a little while to see what happens before we actually assign projects for that money? Um, since we're, I mean, we're just starting to see a pickup in, in costs. We certainly can. And as, as Nikki mentioned, you know, it's coming in two pieces, one this year and one next year. So the timing of the receipt of those dollars um, will, will also be spread out a bit, which will give us a little time. We're not gonna have all of those resources in time for our own budget planning for calendar 22. We'll get some of those resources in calendar 22. So I think to your point, Trustee Vree, we'll have some time to assess where things stand and whether some of those resources need to go towards some of these projects um, or others that may, may uh, pop up. Thanks. And we could certainly look at programming those funds um, on, from a financing standpoint, put those towards the end of the plan since we know those are guaranteed um, so that we have that kind of safeguard there. Yeah, hey, uh, I have a question for Nikki. Um, do you know what's happened to our borrowing costs, say, since fall with the sharp rise in interest rates? I don't no yet um, we should have a, a little bit better um, idea in the coming weeks we do have a ratings call coming up um, with s p um, and we could get some comparative bond issue numbers um, from our financial advisor to see what's happened recently um, we don't have any indication from them um, to sound the alarm quite yet um, I think they would have been, we've been working with them on preparing the official statement and the preliminary financials that will go to the rating agency. Um, so if for some reason they thought this was a bad idea, um, <laughs> we we would certainly have a, an idea so, that, with that. What's, what's the duration of these again? 20 years. These would be 20 year bonds. Yeah, I mean, so I'm just thinking since from Jan one to now, I mean, just, yeah, I'm just thinking of the tenure being up almost, you know, 80 basis points. So I'm just thinking that um, we might have done well with the last, you know, catching a, a, a pretty low interest rate back in the fall. But it's, this should be interesting to see um, what our borrowing costs are going to be. Not not from a spread perspective, but more just because the entire cost of everything has shifted so much higher. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. No problem. That's a good question. And we can certainly ask for some comparative data. They're pretty forthcoming on sharing that information. And it's all public information. So are there any other questions? Okay, seeing none, that concludes my presentation.
And Jonathan, is there anything else that anyone would like to discuss? Hearing nothing. Um, Jordan, were there any public comments during the call? No, we did not receive any. All right. Um, okay, hearing none, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? So moved. All right, second. Um, Phil, do you, do you take a roll call? I will do it just to be, just to be- uh, Your name's up there. Uh, Trustee Vre. Yes. Trustee Rubin. Yes. We are adjourned. All right, thanks everybody. See you Thursday. Thank you. Thursday. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.